Hi, how you doing? <clears throat> Welcome back to the uh, channel, guys. It's your buddy Uncle Bruce here for the afternoon session. It's three o'clock Eastern time. We've got an hour to go before we close down for the day. And uh, we're just coming through here. The uh, reaction to the market it's for the uh, Eastern time. We got an hour for the reaction from the uh, minutes. Uh, the uh, the uh, minutes they had from the Federal Reserve, and uh, the market uh, reacted um, negatively. Uh, a little up and then a negative reaction and now it's kind of come back a bit now down a bit but it's not a big deal we're down 126 on the dow whoop de doo 126 points uh we dropped we were down what four or five hundred yesterday at one point came down closed down a couple hundred s p down 12 and nasdaq is up six up uh, and a quarter so this is not a a market-wide negative reaction it's just uh i don't know just some trading reaction right now I'm finding interesting oil down a buck 44 a barrel now 65 12 for oil this is 78 dollars uh july 4th it's supposed to go to 90. that was what all the analysts are saying it is 65 bucks a barrel uh is your oil gone has your oil gone down in price uh mine hasn't uh it was supposed to i thought that oil would react you know um oil would react uh you know uh, in such a way that gas would go down you know oil goes down like 10 bucks a barrel you figure gas go down 50 cents a gallon it hasn't happened but if oil goes up five bucks a barrel gas goes up 25 cents a gallon have you ever noticed that it doesn't uh, it doesn't come back it only goes up hmm kooky uh that's what it is it's kooky that's what it is we live in a kooky world and uh what can i say we got robin hood sitting at fifty dollars ten cents earnings coming out after the uh, market I have no idea why that why on earth this stock is um is up <laughs> I, don't, I i can't possibly imagine that these guys are going to come up with stellar earnings i i just they're bleeding red ink they've got legals up to their wazoos they got lawyers all over the place lawsuits everywhere i don't know uh but yeah <laughs> okay uh it's a bizarre world uh, 1451 on our sofa up 76 cents today Feeling like uh, feeling like uh, uh, the guy, you know, li living in a van down by the river, you know, feeling good. Uh, that's nice to see it going up to fourteen fifty two. At least, sure, sure, beats thirteen sixty or whatever the heck we were doing yesterday. GameStop one fifty nine ten down four forty five. Uh, low on the day one fifty seven sixty three. That was first thing this morning. We kind of kind of came back into the one sixty one sixty one two range, and we backed off again into the uh, 150s, uh, mid-50s, uh, or 158 range, now 159. So uh, it, it hasn't moved much. I mean, it's an $8 swing today. Typical games up, but there's room there for option writing and profits. Um, ATIP, $4 on the nose, up $0.11. Cents. Uh, AMC, uh, up $0.12. Cents. Matterport, uh, up $0.08 cents at 1397 but hanging around 14 here. 23 and me down $0.24 cents at 8 bucks. That's where it's been hanging for hours. Fifth wall down 66 cents to 11.64. I can't make heads or tails of this stock. I just can't. I, I kind of get the impression that maybe the shares are heading back to the $10 level because that's where the deal is being done at, and the 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 um, the uh, meeting is uh, set for 23rd of, sept uh, of August. That's five days. Is, is it going to do that and then go, or is it just fooling us and it's kind of hanging around here and then it's going to take a shot back to 12.50 to 13 like. I can't tell you. Uh, 660,000 shares. Uh, these SPACs in their last days go through crazy gyrations. I just say ignore it. Sit tight. Wait it out. This is a great deal. This is a great uh, acquisition. S Smart Rent is going to be a winner of a company. Absolute winner. But, uh, you know, I just... Ha, uh, people hold me to, uh, you know, one penny move, I'm wrong. I mean, what can I say? Um, Vector uh, up $0.08 cents to 10 uh, 11. It got up today for a moment to like uh, 10 33 but it's backed off about $0.20 cents in the last hour. Uh, Spire, nine eighty three at $0.42. Cents. Spire broke 10 today, 10 dollars 134,000 shares traded. So Spire uh, just keeps kind of, you know, making us feel better. Uh, Sextair up down $0.30 cents to eight forty seven. That makes us feel worse. Um, Vanek Vectors down $0.32, cents. nothing to really worry about here. Home Depot up two seventy seven. IBM up $2.12. Uh, sorry, down two twelve. The heartbreaker IBM is at $140.30. Dow is now down 143 points. Um, it's still uh, just hovering around the low of the day at the moment. Will that last? I don't know. There were bargain hunters coming into the market late last night. Then there were tentative people today. We might, now that we're through the minutes, 
we might come up again. I don't know. Uh, I can't break the market, market minute to minute. I can just follow it for you. Microsoft up 71 cents. Apple down 241. Um, wow, uh, like really? Tesla up uh, 27.94. Bed Bath Beyond down 21 cents. BlackBerry up 56 cents to 10.23. Real Caribbean is actually up two bucks, up 209. If you're a an, a put player, you might want to look at some RCL puts and scoop some of those. Uh, Royal Caribbean, a, a Norwegian exit, 52 cents. Carnival up 76 to 22.80. Amazon down 18 bucks. Facebook down a nickel. Uh, Google up 9.91. Uh, Target down 4.92. Uh, JP Morgan down 15 cents. Costco down four bucks. Uh, it was up earlier today. Walmart down 78 cents. It was up earlier today. Cisco down 59 cents. Nvidia coming out with earnings after the bell down a dollar 14. Um, everyone believes Nvidia is going to post phenomenal results. All the analysts are going, NVIDIA, man, on fire, getting top-notch money, high margins. They're they're on fire. Stock's down. Robinhood is up. People are expecting Robinhood to lose money. Robinhood is up three bucks. NVIDIA is down two bucks. This world is screwed up. Uh, this investment community hasn't got a clue what it's doing. There are some stupid forces at work. Goldman Sachs, 402.38, down 2.59. Bargoon, as far as I'm concerned, that is a $700 stock in a year. What can I? What can I tell you? I just, I just don't know. Uh, was easier once. Um, I remember I was a teenager and uh, I'd come home every day from school and there'd be food in the fridge. And the moment get to have the laundry done for us and uh, and uh, you know all the bills were paid because I didn't have to pay the bills. <laughs> Those are easy times. Um, it's not that easy anymore. Now you got to do it yourself. Uh, mom and dad aren't there to fill the fridge all the time. Um, you know, mumming around to make those beautiful home cooked meals she used to make in the '60s and '70s. You kids today, you have no idea what 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 we had. We had some good stuff going on. Uh, we had Mannix on television. If you ever watched, uh, you know, you ever watched the the Quentin Tarantino movie uh, Tales from Hollywood? Um, uh, they had a little clip of Mannix there. <laughs> Mom used to love watching Mannix. Then we'd watch the Dean Martin show, laugh, fun times, Jack Benny on Johnny Carson. Those are good days. Anyway, here we are um, where NVIDIA is going down with earnings coming out that are going to be phenomenal and Robinhood going up where we know they're bleeding money left, right, and center. So I I, 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 I just don't know. I, obviously, my mom and dad aren't in charge anymore. It's, it's now – maybe it's my fault. Maybe – I'm in charge and I'm screwing it up, but I don't think so. I'm 65. I think I've passed that on to others behind me. The 35 and 45 year olds are in charge now and they're screwing it up. So, okay, there it was. All right, let's do that. All right, uh, 1454 on SoFi. Uh, somebody was mentioning here, Bruce, uh, could you get could, could you get Bruce uh, showing, uh, could you show us like what, what a poor man's covered call looks like? Can you can you help us with that? What is What does that expression mean? And if you watched, lesson number i don't know six or seven or eight uh one of my uh lessons that i have i i go into poor man covers co covered calls and other strategies but I'll, I'll show you i'm happy to do it uh let's take a look at uh the old ibm stock here and uh, i will uh, i will draw something up for you uh ibm as i said earlier down 212 a share right now to 140 bucks um and it doesn't matter where the stock trades at. You don't have to worry about buying the stock. What you need to do is you need to buy a, a, a call option on the stock. Um, and uh, you want to get one that is in the money and is, uh, is trading at a price that is barely above book value. So not too much time premium. So uh, I, I recommend something like uh, you can get away with something like a 120, a January 22, 120. Let's let's. Uh, Let's talk about that. All right, hang on, folks. Let me snap this sucker in here, and we'll talk about IBM. The stock right now, 140.30, just for reference. That's where we are right now, 140.30. And why do I do that? I don't know. I love doing, I love to, uh, you know, if I don't get a perfect zero, I, I like to draw it again and again and again. I should reverse it, just erase it, and then make it nice and clean. It's so simple. I mean, it's, what's, so, what's so hard about this? All right, so the shares are a one forty thirty, um, and we're gonna do a poor man's covered call strategy. So the st the first thing you do, step number one, you buy uh, one you buy a call 
Uh, let's say we're going to buy an, a, a January 22, um, $120 call. And it will cost us right now approximately, uh, where am I here? About $21.75 or so, uh, $21.75, okay? Or $2175, $2,175 in total cost, all right? Can you read all that over there? Okay, good, all right. So here's the thing, all right? Um, the stock's trading at $140.30. You can buy this call good until January for $21.75. So you, you are, in effect, in possession of 100 shares or, or the upward movement of value or downward movement of, of 100 shares, of course. And uh, uh, at $21.75 to the $120, you are really paying the equivalent of $141.75 for a $140 contract. Well, you know what? For a dollar dollar and 35 cents or dollar 45 cents is all you're paying. Premium, time premium. Dollar 41 cents. That's all you're paying. The rest of this 20 odd dollars is book value. The first 20 bucks is book value. What the contract really is worth. The remaining uh buck 75, well, take away 30 cents from that 75. Dollar 45 is time premium. Fair price to pay. All right, so that's step number 1. Now step number 2. You want to write contracts against your stock, against your stock option. And you want to bring in some premiums. You want to bring some premium money in the door. That's what you're trying to do right now. So let me take a look at something here. Maybe we can figure something out. I'm not sure. Uh, maybe a September call. So maybe we can write something in September. Uh, let's take a little peek. Yeah, okay, here we go. Um, all right, the stock's at 140.30. It, it's down a little bit today. Uh, down to 12, all right? Um, the trick of it is you, you buy the call now while it's cheap because the, the price of the stock has gone down a couple of bucks. This call has gone down a couple of dollars today. So good day to buy this thing. You might not want to write a call option today on the stock. You might want to wait until later today or tomorrow because maybe, just maybe, the shares of IBM will not keep breaking our hearts and might do a little bit of a recovery trade. After all, we had the stock was sitting around 14107 or something like that. Let me just see here. One yeah, 14107 before the when the Fed announcement came out. Now it's 14026. It's dropped 70 odd cents. Maybe you want to wait for it to come back later today or tomorrow, back into this 141, 142 neighborhood, up to you. But if you don't want to wait, you want to take advantage of an option trade, well, I guess you could try one. Um, which one would you do is the question. If you were to uh, to do a 142 contract, you could sell. Now, let's, let's talk about writing. So this would be uh, sell uh, to open. Wonder what that was. That's Jed. A sell to open. I hope you can read that. Um, uh, sell um, a call option, and this is a September. And that one would be uh, just let me get the date on this exact September the third, September third, twenty one, uh, one forty two contract, one forty two uh, contract. All right, uh, you would bring in right now a premium of about a dollar forty. Uh, 140 or equals 140 bucks. So if the shares stay under $142 a share until September the 3rd, so that's not this Friday, it's not next Friday, it's the Friday after, if they stay around 140 to 142 range, you keep all $140 uh, dollars on this option right. You pay $21.75 for the right now to write call contracts. Well, this is the first one of several you're going to do going forward. Now, the thinking here is as each day goes by right now, this being Wednesday, the uh, the uh, 18th of August, uh, Wednesday is almost over. Thursday, Friday comes and goes, and this contract, the stock stays at 140 to 40, 141 range. Um, come Monday morning, this contract now has uh, five days of next week trading and five days the day after that. There's only week after that. There's only ten trading days left on this thing, and it's going to start to lose uh, fourteen cents a day in value just every day, fourteen bucks every day. And um, um, if by Monday, Tuesday of next week, the shares are still around one forty-one or so, they're out of the money. They're this, this, they have to go over one forty-two. They're out of the money. Your uh, your contract is going to be worth less money. It's going to continue to depreciate. That's what you're looking for. 
Um, if the uh, if the shares uh, dip, you know, they go to 140, 150 to 140, 190, 142, 20, and then they back off to 140, 50 again, intraday dips, this uh, contract will drop to 80 cents. It'll drop to 75 cents because it's out of the money further. Time is running out. You can buy it back. And if you score it, uh, say, you wrote you write it uh, even today and you can buy it back Tuesday, Wednesday, next week at, say, 80 cents, you make 60 cents, uh, you make 60 cents profit. So 80 cent purchase price, repurchase price, 60 cent profit equals 60 bucks. And you're making a $60 return on your $2,100 in four days. You turn around at that point and you might look at uh, writing another contract for September the 10th. Or you may want just do nothing, wait for the stock to bounce back up again, write it again. I was saying just a few minutes ago, you may not want to write your, your call right now because the stock is at 140.22 down to 20 on the day today. What if there is a bounce back tomorrow in the Dow? Uh, we've had a couple of days of l selling here. What if bargain hunting comes in and, and this, sh this stock and other shares start a little rebound? If the shares run up to 141.30, just go up a dollar, uh, we're 70 cents out of the money on this contract. We may find that this contract is going to trade at 175, 185. Then you might think of writing it, taking a 180, say, uh, a credit. It's a $180 credit. And you um, you now are looking to buy it back at uh, between 80 cents and a dollar as it slips off and uh, scoring an $80 gain. Are you getting rich on this strategy? No. Uh, but can you do uh, can you do like 60 to 80 bucks a week on this? Yeah, uh, you could. Uh that's three thousand dollars a year, um, you know, to, to four thousand a year on profits uh, on an investment of twenty one hundred dollars. So, you know, six hundred, eight hundred dollars a year is thirty to forty percent of your money. You know, it's a poor man's call. I mean, this is a poor man's strategy, uh, but it, it uh, doesn't require uh, one fourteen thousand dollars to buy a hundred shares. It requires two thousand dollars to buy a call contract to control a hundred shares. So it's one seventh the money. Uh, because if you bought these shares for 140 bucks, you're still only writing one call. Uh, it's not like you can write 15 of them. You can only write one. So uh, why not write one call on 2100 bucks instead of here? Now, if you do have $14,000, theoretically, why don't you buy uh, seven of these calls for 14 grand, seven times two, and now you can write seven contracts at a time. If you can score 50 cents a week, times seven, that's $350 a week. It's $1,400 a month. IBM is bringing you $1,400 a month on your $14,000 a month, $14,000 invested. That's 10% of your money per month. Okay. That's a poor man's call. This is just a, a way to explain it. All right. Stock right now is 140.28 down 214. Great day to buy this contract. Not a great day to sell this contract. Um, and I would, I would definitely be waiting a little bit for a bit of a rebound to try to score a, a, a higher premium. Be very patient on the selling of the of the call. You could theoretically, though, write a call that is longer, that has more life to it. Um, might look at maybe September twenty fourth. Uh, you might be able to pull off uh, maybe one forty threes and bring in two bucks. But now you've you've added more time to your transaction, which means you might only do about four or five contract writes over the life of this call. But don't worry about the fact that as time goes by, you are running out of time on this uh, this contract because you know it will expire Jan twenty second. If the shares are one hundred forty dollars in December, this contract uh, at at one forty up here, this contract will still be worth twenty dollars book value, with maybe fifty to seventy cents of time. So you may have lost a dollar here, seventy five cents here of value. Uh, the shares, you know, are 141. These are worth 21 book value. You'll probably get 2175 for them. You'll sell these Januarys and you'll turn around and buy 120 contracts for April next year, adding another four months of time to a new option. And you continue writing poor man calls. This is an ongoing forever thing if you want it to be. Obviously, if the shares go down to 130 by December, then this is only worth ten dollars in book value, not twenty, of course, because the market have gone down. But so uh, you'll you'll sell this uh, one twenty. You'll turn around and buy a one twenty for April uh, uh, again, four months out, and might run you a dollar more. It might run you like 
eleven fifty instead of getting ten fifty to you sell this for ten fifty, you have to buy the new one for eleven fifty, but you just added four months to your existence and you're writing calls again, continually calling, writing calls. Poor man option strategy. This can be done on, on IBM, Apple, Microsoft. Uh, you can do this on GameStop. The problem with GameStop, as you are aware, folks, GameStop uh, shares have a higher premium on their stock. So you're paying a higher premium to get an in-the-money call, but you're getting higher premiums to write calls. So that might be a strategy you might decide, you know, I think I might do that. You could do this on uh, on Robinhood stock. You can do it on uh, AMC stock. Whatever, whatever can work for you. Uh, is it's a way to it's, it's something to consider uh, writing options. Let me take a quick peek at uh, GameStop right now. If you wanted to buy January uh, contracts on GameStop, uh, can you get it in the money at a decent price? The stock is just around one fifty nine thirty six. Uh, wow, this is expensive stuff. Uh, yeah, uh, one forty that are twenty dollars in the money, twenty eight dollars, uh, forty eight dollars to buy it. And there's <laughs> there is no uh, affordable contract here even $100 call option that has a $59 book value will run you 70 71 dollars to buy it you're paying a very high premium and you're paying a lot of money to get it uh, that that might uh, hold off the uh, poor man strategy regarding uh, GameStop the only other way around it maybe would be to buy say something closer in Maybe October's, um, the October 130s are $35. So that's a 60, once that's a 165 purchase of a 159 stock. The 140s are 29. So that's a 169 for a 159. That's a $10 premium that you're going to lose on your option while you're writing options against it to try to make money on it. And, uh, you might, bring in like if you can bring in two or three dollars a week uh, writing options great the problem is that this option is only good until October 1 you only have a week this month and then you have four weeks next month. you have five weeks to make this money and uh, you're losing 10 guaranteed uh, you better make the first the first 10 bucks you make on your writing campaign will cover the loss of premium assuming the stock stays where it is um, it's a it's a tough strategy so I it doesn't look like you can do it. it it doesn't look practical to do a poor man's covered call strategy on something like a GameStop but on Apple Microsoft uh, uh, even Goldman Sachs uh, definitely is doable it, it is it is doable all right guys thank you all for for being here today popping in to see me um, hope you're doing all right this afternoon hope you enjoy these uh, these uh, these uh, sessions here in front of the whiteboard um, trying to uh, Try to explain how things are going and see what's going on. Um, and uh, let's see uh, what else is happening here. Uh, thank you all. Uh, let's go. Where are we at on some of our stocks? Let me take a peek here. We got any movement out of the ordinary going on while I'm talking away here? Still up 71 on SoFi. Nice. 1446. GameStop at 159.23, down four bucks. ATIP holding at 398 now. Uh, AMC went negative, unfortunately. Uh, Matterport up 22 to 411, looking a little better actually. Uh, Matterport at 417, the high of the day, six cents away from the high of the day on Matterport. Come on, Matterport. 23 me sitting at eight bucks, down a quarter. Uh, fifth wall at uh, uh, down 63 cents, unfortunately. Um, we're up nine on Vector, 1012. We're up uh, 49 on Spire at 990. And Sexter at 24 cents right now. The Dow uh, down 153, and um, uh, S and P down 17, and Nasdaq down 13 and a half. And uh, yep, the, the 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 worry in Wall Street is that the Fed, the Federal Reserve, will begin to uh, taper sooner than thought, um, which could signal the possibility of higher rates. Well. The possibility of higher interest rates means a one quarter point increase in interest rates in a year and a half. Panic. Oh, panic. Like the world is going to end. Like, give me a break. Anyway, there you have it. Um, let's see what's going on. Um, here we go. Uh, Uncle Bruce, do you uh, think selling calls out of the money? Do you think, uh, or if so, what success percentage do you go for? 
for safe and easy money. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm not sure your question exactly, but I, I'm guessing um, I do. Uh, I do like the idea of selling calls that are out of the money. Uh, if you're going to write short-term calls, yes, out of the money for something like GameStop at 159 a share right now. So we're trading it. I'd be looking at maybe 170s, uh, 175s. It might be two weeks out to, to get some decent premiums. Uh, that's a possibility. If the if GameStop were to pop up into the 160 range, 161, 123 range this afternoon, I'd be looking at writing 170s at least, 175s or higher for two weeks or so. Um, let's see. Uh, what else have we got here? Um, <laughs> uh, What have we got? What have we got? What have we got? Um, what have we got? What have we got? I love you, Uncle Bruce. Thank you. Not everyone does, but I appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> um, what else? Uh, love, love you too, guys. Thank you. Uh, uh, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Um, uh, 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 just reading some of your comments to see if there's any questions here I want to address here. Um, and let's see. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, is uh, It all sounds great, but is there still any risk involved? Of course there is. Uh, there's always risk involved. If the price goes below 120, January 22 rolls around, the call after expire worthless. Of course, if, if, if uh, IBM shares drop, from where they're been trading at uh, below that 120 level from 140 to 120. Yes, uh, my my contention is that with a split coming of the company into two different divisions, I think the shares will go up in value. And I think you'll make money not only writing short term call contracts, but you'll make money owning the call contract itself. If you're afraid of the split of IBM uh, having any kind of impact on your on your contract, then buy um, uh, Apple um, in the money calls or pick up uh, Facebook or or, uh, or uh, Microsoft or, or any of these guys uh, then fine go ahead and grab those and enjoy uh, enjoy uh, the ownership of that that particular stock and write calls on those um, they might even be uh, more profitable for you than than uh, say uh, uh, say a uh, IBM contracts it might be more premium involved uh, sure uh, this can be done on on whatever stock you like, but yes, of course, uh, any any contra any stock can go up and down in value, obviously. And you've seen the um, the Dow Jones a year ago, March, when the pandemic broke, and it became obvious that the planet was going to suffer some economic hardships here with with shutting down of economies and a lot of unknowns. The Dow dropped 30, 35 percent in like two weeks. Uh, didn't last long, but it happened. Um, and it shook up some people. Um, theoretically, if you were in a position at that time with these kinds of uh, trades, whatever contract you would have written against whatever you were writing against, that would have expired worthless immediately. You could have written additional contracts and watched them drop to the to the floor as well, and you would have cashed in on the on the way down. Um, theoretically, you could have t bought closed everything out. You could have bought back your call that you wrote for nothing, bought back the call you bought for say half the price. Turn right around and now bought uh, contracts further out at a lower price for that same money and waited out the correction. If that would have happened, on the other hand, you may have found that in that two week time frame, uh, you uh, bought back your call for say half the money so you, you bought it for. You bought it half back for half. Turn around and a week or two later, now you notice the market bottoming out. Now you make your move to buy a four or five six month call uh you may have bought ibm calls with an 80 dollars strike price and uh you might or might not have written a call against it um because um you know if the market was starting to move up a little bit you would have waited off well held off a little bit um and then started to look at writing short-term calls that are five or ten dollars out from the ibm who knows i mean you, you you just adjust with the market you go with the flow the key here is that if you're into an $80 call on IBM and the IBM came back to 110, you're up $30. Uh, you know your your contract's 30 in the money. You pay 10 for it. It's 30 in the money. It's a $32 contract now. Hey, uh, right cover calls against that now. Thank you. Uh, this is all good too. Um, so anyway, there you go. 
Uh, let's see. Um, I'm thinking of using my $10 January ME call to do poor man's covered call, but I, but it's not in the money yet. So I, I, do I just sell at the higher strike than 10 if there's an in the money? Yeah, you, you can't really you can't really do anything with that right now. You're you're out of the money. Uh, the, the stock's an eight dollar stock. Uh, you, you can't. You're not going to get anywhere with that strategy right now. Um, where are we at now? So far, fourteen forty through fourteen forty two. Right now, people are saying here, going postal sellers really pounding so far. When it gets about fourteen fifty, it has happened multiple times today. Well, there's a, that is a round number. Uh, but if you break it, uh, you know, to decisively break through it, you're on your way to fifteen, and I'm sure there's resistance there too. We'll see what's going on. All right. Um, that's the way it is in this market. Uh, markets go up, go down, and sometimes there's resistance. Uh, butterflies work very nice on uh, GameStop. Check out my video, number uh, my lesson, number nine lesson. We just did this past Wednesday, all about butterfly tr butterfly trades. Check that one out. Uh, you'll get a handle on how this works. I do. I show some examples on GameStop. Um, worth your worth your money to to check out that one because it's it's a little bit of time to absorb all that. Um, and uh, let's see uh, what else. Um, what else? What else? What else? Um, let's see. Thank you for the thumbs ups, folks. Appreciate it. Uh, let's see. Let's see. We don't know. We don't know when IBM is being split. Um, we think it's sometime in the fall, towards the end of the year, but we have nothing nothing else to, to tell you about, so we're waiting. Uh, uh, examples of the butterfly options are available on lesson number nine. Just posted it yesterday. Check it out. Um, let's go. Um, um, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. And uh, yeah, there we go. All right. Um, let's see what uh, what we have here on on some other ideas. Um, let's just take a peek here. What was I thinking about earlier? I was going to talk to you about something else. Oh, SoFi, somebody yesterday asked me, uh, should I think about writing uh, some puts on SoFi? I think these are $15 puts, and I said, yeah, I think it would be a great idea to do so. Uh, I think at the time, the SoFi shares were in the low 14s, and then they dropped into the mid-13s, high 13s, and now we're back up again to 14.36. Um, so as an example, I think we were talking about possibly January 22. SoFi puts. I'm just going to see if I can get this to pop up here. Here we go. All righty. Um, and uh, let me do that over here on the side. Um, there we go. All righty. Um, yeah, so here we go. SoFi. Okay, so SoFi, <clears throat> uh, they're trading right now at 1437. All right. And the strategy is to write a put contract, in effect, to to uh, be prepared to buy the stock um, uh, from an option holder at $15 a share. So what I'm looking to do is I, uh, I was interested in, and I would recommend the idea of selling uh, a put contract that would be a January, uh, date would be officially January 21st, 2022. Uh, it's a $15 a $15 put, that's the exercise price, and you would receive, because you're, op you're, you're, you're uh, open to sell, the opening transaction is a sell, you would receive right now about $3.15 uh, a share, so $3.15, or $315 a contract in a credit. So what I like about this trade here is um, you're on the hook to buy SoFi at $15 until, uh, until January 2021. 2022, I mean, fifteen dollars. But you're being given up front three dollars and fifteen cents to do it. So actually, what you're you're really doing is you're paying eleven eighty five. Because you take uh, you take the fifteen dollar price, take away three one five from here, and you are paying eleven eighty five to buy SoFi until January uh, twenty one twenty two. That is the obligation you're making. Um, would you be comfortable doing that? If you are, this contract is for you. Um, why I like this put contract is that if the shares do what they did today, and right now they're up 61 cents at this point, so we're up 61 cents today. Uh, 
they go back to say 16 bucks where they were you know last week sometime at 16 dollars they're out of the money and uh the uh there's no one going to sell you stock at 15 if they're trading at 16. um the other thing is that they, they won't be worth 315 anymore they'll be worth probably a dollar 70 from now these will probably be worth about two dollars a piece 210 a piece in theory you could buy them back and score the dollar for yourself or you can just do nothing and let time go by. Hopefully the shares go even higher, which we all feel so far will do, I'm sure. Um, at uh, $18 a share, uh, SoFi shares at $18, $3 out of the money. Even with, uh, with um, January on the, uh, you know, on the hook here, if it's now September, October, and we're at $18, these will be worth a buck. They, they'll be down to a dollar. You can now buy them back for the dollar and score the $2 gain per contract. Now, one contract, $315. 10 contracts, $3,150. 20 contracts, $6,300. Uh, score between $1 and $2 per contract to not buy SoFi. <laughs> I like it. Now, obviously, the, how do you blow up? How does it go bad for you? Well, the stock goes down in value. Sure, if it trades below here and goes even lower, then you might get assigned and you might have to pay $15 less the $315 you got. <coughs> You're going to pay $1185 to buy SoFi. So if the shares go to $10, you got to come up with $1185 to buy them, obviously. Of course, as soon as you do buy them, you can either sell them and lock in the loss or you own them now and you turn around and write call against, calls against them Maybe you're going to write 1250 calls good for three or four months. They'll probably bring you a buck, buck and a half, maybe two bucks. That will compensate you for the 1185 cost because you'll bring two dollars in and now you're on the hook for 985 and they're trading at 10. It's a way to bail yourself out of a scenario if you were forced to buy. But uh, you got to ask yourself, are the odds in in the. Uh, in the favor of the stock likely going higher over the next few months or lower in the next few months. We've had the sell off from 1750 when we came out, they came out with the financials down to 1360 yesterday. We're now at 1437, 1435, something like that right now. Um, your call. Uh, this, this is why I like this trade. I like this trade with an 1185 purchase price. I just like this deal. Um, I'm not afraid to be, uh, to go to, to take that deal if I were doing these trades. All right uh let's see what else is going on um uh let's see yeah, let's go let's go let's go let's go uh uh what else is going on here i do not know i do not know what else is going on um we don't have a troll here today do we it doesn't look like it um okay it doesn't look like we have a troll uh at this point okay uh, thank you all for for sticking around. Appreciate that you're uh, that you're here. Um, all right. What can I say? What else is going on? Uh, we're at fourteen thirty one on SoFi GameStop one fifty eight fifty one down five. ATIP is uh, three ninety eight. The Dow is uh, now down two sixty one. It's the worst level of the day. It's definitely backing up. S and P down thirty, Nasdaq down sixty four. So the big the big markets are off. Robinhood is up, SoFi is up, ATIP is up, Matterport is up uh, thirty five cents. Uh, Vectors unchanged. Spire is up fifty four. So some of the spacs we have uh, those shares are higher, um, and uh, the big board is lower. Um, IBM down two forty five to one thirty nine ninety eight. There's a bargoon there. Uh, Microsoft down 18 cents. Finally lost a little bit of ground after a 250-point Dow drop. Apple down 326. Tesla up $26 today. BlackBerry is up. Royal Caribbean is up. Norwegian's up. Carnival's up in this down market. Uh, Google's still up three bucks. Um, so we have some winners here and some losers. Netflix up 440. Snowflake up five. DraftKings up a buck and a quarter. Workday up a dollar 65. DoorDash up 630. Airbnb up three. Micron up 27 cents. Intel down 19. Um, a lot of uh, interesting patterns going on here with this market today. Um, and I think that the, uh, the, uh, the, the interest rate guys, the bond people uh, trying to speculate about interest rates are just, they're chasing, they're chasing their own tail. Uh, around and around and around. I don't know. I'm not sure how else to explain it, 
I think they're just chasing their own tail around. Um, there, this is a no, this is a nothing story. There's nothing to higher interest rates to be worried about. There's no way uh, the U.S. is going to raise rates if Europe is going to be in negative territory. I just don't see it happening. Um, I see the U.S. economy uh, possibly faltering a little bit. Um, and I'm not talking about backing up and going negative. I think the U.S. economy might go from a 6% growth to a 4% growth or a 3.5% growth. Still not a problem in my book. I just have the impression that the American economy may mellow out a little little while for a few quarters, but not soar like like higher interest rates would would come in for. You would raise rates if your economy overheats. The U.S. economy is not overheating. That is not the case at all. It's just not firing in all cylinders right now. So this is a to me, it's a nothing burger. But there is there are people out there looking for an excuse to take profits or or trade, or they're just trying to trade in a in a in a in a predictable range and uh the analysts out there are perhaps blaming day traders moving money around on the interest rate fear when that's not the case at all they're just finding deals that are that are attractive finding ways to short stock cover their trades go long then go flat then go short then go flat that could really really be what this is all about oil down a dollar 67 to 64.92 if we had an overheated american economy oil would be 85 to 100 bucks a barrel and it's at 64 down today so no there is no overheating of the u.s economy going on all righty there it is uh robin hood 49.97 holding this gain uh so far right now uh let's see uh, what would be a, a good out of the money covered call to sell to open on ME uh, matter uh, on on uh, 23 and me that you want to sell covered calls on ME um, I don't recommend it um, not at eight bucks a share I just don't recommend it uh, the shares can pop a buck and a half at any time and then you have no good out of the money situation going whatsoever so yeah I wouldn't recommend that um, I would actually uh, look at writing puts I would write puts on uh, 23 and me that's what I'd recommend you consider doing you might want to write ten dollar puts uh maybe you can write 750 puts um several months out that might be your strategy if you want to write something write uh puts but make sure you get a premium on them uh let's see here uh, got some more game stuff 158 well done um uh, and uh <laughs> yeah uh no i can't i can't explain this in in uh, in five minutes uh the, these were not uh, put contracts. Uh, these were incredibly complex uh, uh, insurance strategies that were being put together to uh, short the housing market. And uh, I, I, one, I'm not the guy to explain it. Uh, number two, uh, I would need two hours. And number three, you'd be bored to tears in 15 seconds. So I'm not doing it. Um, tell us a GameStop story. <laughs> Uh, once upon a time, there was a guy named Ryan Cohn who bought a bunch of stock, and next thing you know, he had 13% of the company. And uh, and uh, with that, he uh, was able to get himself and two of his buddies onto the board of directors. And with that, they began the systematic uh, dismantling of the management of the company and the rest of the board to eventually take over the entire company, fund, uh, work out a couple of stock trades to, uh, to pay off debt and put $1.9 billion cash in the company and now run the show and bring in brand new management at the top end to uh, move the company forward into his vision. That's a rough, a rough, quick story on GameStop. And uh, I think the investors will live happily ever after if they stick around long enough for the show. That's my thinking, uh, but I could be wrong. <laughs> Where's Ryan Cohen now? I don't know. He's working somewhere. I bought three IBM, slowly building this position in my portfolio right on uh well well done the dow now down 215 is a, a little better off still down 26 points on s p down 53 on nasdaq oil down a dollar 69 right now robin hood at 49.95 we have uh, 16 minutes left in the day uh so at 1428 up 53 cents uh gamestop 158.62 up 493 um atip holding at 398 uh, Matterport at 1424. Looks like that's the high of the day for Matterport, from what I can tell you. It looks awful close. Yeah, 1430 here, right at the high of the day, 856,000. Uh, so Matterport today up 35 cents. Happy to see that. They're between the two stocks, SoFi and Matterport, SoFi is 1430, 
and uh, Matterport 1424. It's a six cent spread now between the two stocks. How about that? 23 me 802, uh, fifth wall down 55 to 1175. Vector unchanged, Aspire at 995 of 54 cents, and then Sextero down 26 cents. So we got, that's where we're at on this market at the moment, guys. Uh, and uh, let's see, uh, how are you calculating time premium and how can you tell the difference? Well, uh, how do I calculate it? How do I, I, I guess it's more of a gut feel, I have to admit. Uh, uh, been around so long watching this stuff. Contracts, you know, contracts have anywhere from one day to live um, up to a year and a half to two years to live. Um, and as the expiry date approaches, contracts start to lose value. Now, obviously, if you're if you're on a Monday morning looking at um, uh, at a call contract that expires that next Friday, five days later, you can think to yourself, this contract loses one fifth of its value in time every day. Five trading days, 20% a day. At the end of the week, it's worth nothing, no time premium. Uh, two weeks to go, that's 10 trading days. Three weeks to go, 15 trading days. Unless there's a holiday long weekend in there somewhere to foul it up, you lose one of those days from a holiday you don't trade. Um, and so if you have a four week contract, it sounds like a long time, but it's only 20 days of trades, theoretically. And every day is equal to 5% loss from the 20th day to the, to the end. Uh, but of course, if you get into that contract with only 10 days left to go, you're now looking at a 10% depreciation every day from your point of view going forward. Uh, and it can be brutal if you're long a contract that expires in less than two weeks and you're out of the money a ways. It can be crushing. And this is where writing call options can be very juicy because most people think buy low, sell high. And they can't get their heads around buying high, selling low. They don't. They can't do that. But they love thinking buy low, sell high. And so call options trade more often than put contracts. And call options usually have higher premiums than put options, generally speaking. And so you'll see some folks out there, a lot of option traders, who will pay a premium price to get into a, a stock because they feel that something's happening. You'll watch the halftime report on CNBC and you'll see John Najarian or Pete Najarian talk about unusual option activity. And you'll see staggering transactions of, of thousands of shares being traded uh, just uh, you know at ridiculous prices. Some cases you might see 5,000 contracts trade where the stock has, uh, is a uh, Dollar fifty out of the money with five days to go, and then the contract dies. I mean, it's a five-day contract, buck fifty out of the money. What is that all about? Um, you got to wonder what do they think they know, or what do they think is going to happen that's going to make such a move uh, occur on a stock. Sometimes they're right, sometimes they're wrong. Um, but then again, you'll see uh, gamblers buying ten and fifteen and twenty cent contracts that are way out of the money, little a little bit of time left. But they're gambling big time, like a like a slot machine. They're looking for the big payoff. You know, three sevens in a row. Uh, they're looking for the payoff on one trade. And if they if they're lucky, they pick up a thousand contracts. They go up ten times in value in three days. Hey, you know they they take fifteen hundred bucks, turn into fifteen grand, or they take ten grand, turn into a hundred thousand. Uh, it's just money and factor. It's just leverage. It's all it is. Um, but there are others who do the calculating game and they and they buy contracts uh, further out uh, at the money or in the money or, or out of the money, whatever the strategy and uh, others buy spreads to uh, to guard against risk. And uh, there's a million ways to play the option market. And uh, as you get experienced to following it, you'll get better at figuring it out uh, and you'll begin to notice, uh, uh, you'll see the patterns and you'll notice how they depreciate in value and, uh, and uh, you'll be uh, more used to it. Anyway, there it is. Uh, what else is happening? Um, let's see. Let's see. Uh, what else is going? Um, hi, Uncle Bruce. Uh, would writing out of the money puts on ATIP for February be a good idea right now with a ATIP so low? Um, um, I don't think there's much of a trade available to you on ATIP. There's just no, there are really no premiums uh, that are being offered. It's all book value. Um, and uh, you're better. You're probably just better off buying the stock at four bucks with no time limits, uh, lots of liquidity, um, and um, and um, 
no pressure with regard to to uh, you know spreads between bid and ask. I mean, the stock has a one or two penny bid ask spread. That's all there's to it. And that might be the way to uh, to go with it. Uh, let's see. Um, let's go. Let's go. Um, here we are. What else have we got here? Uh, Uncle Bruce, I bought 50 shares of CYXT when it was a SPAC uh, and got 17 CYXT warrants when it merged. Can you explain what the warrants are and what to do with them? This is probably, uh, uh, th this would be uh, on the uh, on the uh, Sextera. Uh, so you probably got um, uh, contracts that are exercisable at 1150 a share. You're probably allowed to uh, add 1150 per warrant and buy more stock from the treasury if you wish or you can sell them in the open market they're listed as a separate security and you can just take the money um, you probably received it looks like you received one warrant for every three shares you had which was this which was the ratio and so in effect it's a gift to you and it helps compensate your uh, your cost uh, if you can sell them for I think they were trading at one time for a dollar eighty a piece and if you divide that by three, it works out to 60 cents per share of value because it takes three to make one uh, warrant. You only got one third of warrant for every share you had. So uh, 60 cents per share as a gift. So your six Terra right now is trading at uh, uh, 851. And if you add it 60 cents, that would be your 9, 9, 11, 9, 12 value. Um, and you can do with those as you wish. You can hold on to them. They're good for years. They're good for, what, five years? Uh, so, Don, um, whatever you like, you can just hang out and just, just wait. Uh, so far, 14.24, up 49 cents right now. Uncle Bruce, if my if any of your written covered calls uh, pops off a few months before they expire, is there a general strategy of this, or is there something you, you just need to use your gut feeling for? Um, if any of your written calls pops off before they expire uh okay I, I i'm assuming you're asking me if the shares go up in value and these calls go up in value as well um is there a strategy what do you what do you recommend you, what you could do is if you wrote covered calls on say uh, gamestop um let me just kind of clear this off here uh, there we go all right, so on GameStop, um, if you wrote uh, if you wrote a calls if you wrote calls uh, sold calls uh, for say I don't know hundred hundred eighty dollars uh, exercise and you received uh, ten dollars each uh, in 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 proceeds. And the stock at the time you did it, it was 160 a share. Again, this is all in theory. And now the shares are trading at uh, uh, 180, so they go up to uh, they go up to 180 a piece. And these calls are now trading at maybe 15 dollars because they go up in value as the stock goes up in value. What do you do? Um, well, you could theoretically just buy them back and turn around and write new calls, another set of calls instead. So you buy these back uh, for 15, mean you, means you've lost $5 a contract on this transaction over here, obviously. But you now sell a new call uh, further out, uh, more time, and it might be a $200 call, and you sell it for 15 bucks. In effect, you are, you are you're just rolling over $15. You spent 15 to buy these back, you brought in 15 to write these instead, the net effect is you've gone from a from a 180 exercise to a $200 exercise right here, which is 20 bucks a share more in your pocket if you got taken out. Let's say the stock keeps going. Stock goes higher, goes now to uh, $210 a month later. It's $210 going to the moon. Uh, this contract that you sold for 15 is now 10 in the money, and it's now trading at uh, say $22. It's uh, you know it's worth uh, 10 book 12 pro time premium buy them back at 22 and on this contract now you're 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 losing here on this one seven dollars but you turn around and you sell a brand new call uh and it might be uh for a, a couple of weeks longer in length make like a month longer in length or whatever 
and you're selling a say a two hundred thirty dollar call even a month or two out further out you're gonna bring in twenty five dollars in cash on that contract most likely and in effect you're gonna add three dollars cash in your account now you had ten dollars cash when you first sold this first one then you bought it back and sold it you still have the, you still plus ten then you you sold it and, and you bought it back and sold this one you're now plus thirteen dollars cash in your account so you now have uh, thirteen hundred dollars cash in your account credit uh, from the original ten and this additional three and you're saying to the market you can take me out of 230 bucks a share take me out of 230 anytime you want if you want right here uh, because you've written now you wrote a 180 you bought it back you wrote a 200 you bought it back you're writing a 230 and you're ahead of the market and you're just going come on take me out I, you're of course at 210 dollars a share when you first wrote the contract the stock was 160. if you had 100 shares they were worth sixteen thousand dollars all right that's what they were worth. Uh, now your stock is worth at 210. Your stock's worth 21 thousand dollars. So you're you're five thousand dollars richer on your stock, uh, and you have 1300 dollars cash in the bank over here. 1300 dollars, and you're asking the market take me out at 230, buddy. Exercise me at 230. So it's a win, a win, and a win. If you didn't do anything, you didn't do a thing. You just bought the stock. I just sat there. Okay, your stock is worth two hundred ten dollars a share, and congratulations. And uh, um, you've done none of these transactions. You don't have the thirteen hundred cash in the bank, and you have no option against your stock. You've got it. Now let's suppose it's like all things; they go up and down. The shares back off from two ten back to uh, one ninety. Stocks can do that. If this stock was back to one ninety, I'll just write that up here. The stock goes back down to 190 a share. If you own the stock, it's worth $19,000. But if you own the stock and you've written this contract where you have a $1,300 credit sitting here, this $230 contract you wrote for $25, it isn't worth $25 anymore. The stock has gone down 20 bucks a share, and time has gone by. This contract will be worth maybe $15, $13. Um, you are, you are uh, able to just buy it back for a lot less money if you want to or let it let it expire worthless because it will expire worthless um, and you're you're still sitting on a $100 90, $190 stock so being an option writer you're always ahead of the you're ahead of someone who isn't doing anything now, if that makes any sense I hope hope that makes sense for you all right uh, let's go uh, What we got here um, just following the latest comments here uh, hang on uh, here we go here we go uh, thank you uncle B thank you everybody for being here we're at two minutes to go before we close out this uh, uh, the deal hey uncle B great evening show in this format great uh, format love it um, and uh, uh, getting stung anywhere so far so far 1420 still up 45 cents Good day. Give me 10 of these. I'll take 45 cents a day for 10 days in a row. I'm quite a happy guy. Um, let's see. Uh, do, you, do you recommend buying stock or options on ATM? I don't know uh, what ATM is. Um, let's see. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, there you go. Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, okay. Uh, look, uh, how many times has this happened? How many times has GameStop gone off to $500 a share? In all the time you've ever watched GameStop, you saw it happen one time, and it only went to $500 in the aftermarket. It never went to $500 on the market itself. Having said that, it did reach $400 and something on the market itself. I'll give you that. Once, one time, um, traded 200 million shares a day, one time. That was then. This is now. Welcome to the new normal. Uh, don't look for it to go to 500 a share in one hour. Don't look for that. You're you're dreaming. You're you're just you're just dreaming right now. Uh, you, if you're dreaming of that, you're thinking AMC can go to $200 a share in 15 minutes. Not gonna happen. Sorry, not gonna happen. All right. Anyway, there it is. Uh, GameStop 157.03 down 652. Um, love these board sessions. I'm glad you do. I'm glad you like these. Um, and uh, let's see. Uh, good time to buy in. Always on sale. It's always good. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, bell's just going off right now. Thank you to the welcome to the end of the day. Uh, nice to have you here. Uh, we lost three ninety nine on the Dow, four hundred point drop. So it didn't have a recovery at the end of the day. More nervous Nellies in the market than uh, bargain hunters. Down for a three ninety seven on the day, one point one percent. S P down fifty points. Nasdaq down one thirty six. Do not be surprised if tomorrow. We have a, a sell-off in the morning or a possible pop-up right in the morning, right off the get-go. Because if Asia and Europe does not follow the American lead, uh, then American investors will jump all over their market and look for bargains. Uh, so we'll see how this plays out because I don't think the volume was very heavy today. It looked like very thin volume today. Um, let's see. Uh, we're looking at uh, SoFi now at 14.22, up 47 cents with the Dow down 400 points or 380. So think about that. The Dow is down 380 points, and your SoFi is up 47 cents. I mean, talk about not being affected by the big board. That's a good sign. GameStop, yeah, down to 156.77. Those of you who've been writing contracts on GameStop, way to go. Uh, you're looking at uh, looking at uh, contracts that are really plummeting in value. Um, ATI uh, P, ATIP at 399 uh, on the day up a dime. Uh, AMC down 54 cents. Matterport up 20 cents on the end of the day at 1409. 23 and me it closed at 801 it hung around eight dollars for the last three hours of the day uh, fifth wall down 50 cents today uh, recovered a bit it was as low as 1160 close 1180 vector up seven cents uh, it turns into rocket lab day after tomorrow spire at 990 up 49 cents good day on a lousy day up uh, down 27 points on sex up 27 cents at 850 vanic down 331. Home Depot up a dollar ten in even in this market it still gained a one dollar gain today after the loss yesterday. IBM down two ninety five one thirty nine forty seven that's a bargoon heartbreaker but it's a bargoon down three eighty on the Dow Microsoft down one seventy nine Apple down three eighty three uh, Tesla up twenty three dollars Bed Bath and Beyond down fifty two cents BlackBerry down for, up forty cents Royal Caribbean up a dollar twenty six. Norwegian up twenty three cents. Carnival up forty seven cents. Amazon down forty dollars to thirty two oh one. Facebook down three bucks. Um, Google a uh, fourteen dollar drop fourteen sixty one. Uh, Target down seven twenty five today after fantastic initial results. So they they gave it up. Um, JPM down a buck forty. Costco down six dollars and thirteen cents. Walmart down a buck fifty four after great financial results. Cisco down 86 cents, coming up with results after the bell. Nvidia down 418, coming up with results after the bell. Uh, Goldman down 596 to 399, a bargoon again on Goldman. In the last uh, month or so, we had a high of 418 on this stock, so it's 18 bucks below the high, the last two week high, and it's trading at 7.3 times earnings. Goldman 7.3 three earnings just let that sink in a little bit it should be trading at about 12 times earnings you know it's a 700 dollars stock just just you know just saying just saying uh okay um what can i tell you? the market is not paying attention to this and that will mean opportunities for those who are and missed opportunities for those who aren't and that is the way this market works sometimes welcome to the show and to the happy times uh what can i say Nice to have you around, guys. I hope you're doing okay. Uh, let's see what else is going on. Thanks. thanks. You're welcome, Kevin. Appreciate that. Uh, thank you for those uh, of you giving me thumbs-ups today. We're working on it as hard as we can for you. All right. Um, let's see. Um, uh, listen, can I move in your basement? I, I can I can buy food, you know. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Splare. Uh, thank you. Uh, we have a few of those in our group. I'm sure we do. Uh, they're everywhere. It's all right. Um, um, <laughs> thank you, Alligator. Uh, thank you, buddy. Um, and uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, 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 <laughs> um, uh, Uncle Bruce, what, what, what you teach at that whiteboard is really speeding up the learning curve. Great to see someone willing to share his knowledge in plain English. Thank you, uh, uh, guys. I, I, I'm. It's it's the least I can do uh, because you guys are not going to get this anywhere else. You just you just not. Uh, you're on your own out there, and um, 
the SEC is not making it easy for you to be able to figure out this information. Thank you for the 209 thumbs up so far today. I uh, appreciate that uh, as well, guys. If you can spare a thumbs up, that would be really nice. Thank you. Uh, hey, uh, it's nice to have you here too, So I'm uh, glad you're here with us. Um, and uh, I remember uh, these times. I remember these times when your chat was open like this. Again, thank you guys uh, for, for popping through here and, and joining us. Um, and I hope you're enjoying it. All righty. Uh, what else can I say? Um, you know, options are, are uh, another instrument and a tool to be used to make money with. That's that's really what it is. If you take advantage of it, great. If you don't, okay. Um, no one's saying you have to do it. But you know what? If you're going to be uh, in, involved in the market and you own stocks, uh, one, you can certainly uh, play the options market as a shareholder, but also you can play the stock market as an option trader only and not be a shareholder at all. Um, but um, you don't have to take crazy, stupid risks to be an option investor, investor in the options market. There's uh, There are ways to do trades. I encourage you, um, it really would be worth your while, watch my classes on how options work uh, on my website. For the investment you're making, you can watch them time and time again. The investment that you're making in each class will more than pay for itself with just a couple of trades. You'll pay for all the classes and you will take this experience with you for years uh, because this does not change. This business has not changed. It has become so much uh, easier now to be a um, an option uh, a player, an investor uh, than ever before. And so, you know, Take a look at that. Uh, uh, take a look into it, and uh, and uh, hopefully you'll get a lot out of that. All right, um, fantastic guys. Uh, I'm glad you uh, you were you're here with me today. Um, and uh, following this, uh, enjoy your comments and uh, and uh, any uh, any thoughts you have on these. Uh, if you have any questions on options or any particular uh, option strategies you're thinking of employing or anything like that, let me know. Uh, we'll, we'll I'm always happy to look into that. Again, thank you. Um, got to, uh, I got to uh, turn off my uh, my chat now for members only. I, I actually forgot to do this. <laughs> so uh, the chat is now uh, a members only, uh, but please consider becoming a member. Help out this YouTuber. Um, your cost to be a follower of this channel as a member of this channel is actually only 25 cents a show. That's all we're charging here. Uh, I'm uh, doing 10 shows a week. Um, uh, Monday to Friday, two a day, uh, 40 a month, and uh, your cost uh, is 25 cents a show if you're a member of this channel. And, and uh, I, I think it's a fair price to ask to become a member of this channel, and it's a way for us to try to keep away from trolls, if at all possible. Sometimes we get attacked regardless, but I know for a fact if I left the chat open all the time, we would be really attacked. Uh, Nelson, you are the man. Uh, you are the gold medal position holder today. Uh, thank you for this donation, uh, 20 bucks. I appreciate it. You are absolutely all alone at the top of the heap in the go on the podium in the gold medal position. And I appreciate the, uh, the donation. It, uh, it makes, these all make a difference to us. We love it when we get, uh, uh, Jenna and I love it when we get PayPal donations because those are, we get like 96% of the money. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Uh, but these are cool too. Uh, we don't mind these. Uh, we do get 70% of this. But PayPal, we get 96%, and we love you for that. Um, whenever anyone makes a PayPal donation, uh, I try to acknowledge who it is, but I don't mention the amount. It's a discretionary thing. A number of people like to donate to this channel, but they don't want the world to know what they're sending us. And we try to respect that by just pulling out the name only and going from there. So thank you all uh, for, for however you're supporting us. I love it. If you're a member, I love you guys. Uh, the more memberships, the better. YouTube really loves it than when they see live YouTubers gaining membership. that That's telling them that there must be an engagement that's working between creator and viewer. And um, for, for me, it's just uh, so, uh, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, when I wake up in the morning and I see how many members we have and how many we've had and how many we still have, it's reassuring to know that uh, I can go on the air today and I can be at the top of my game. I can be in the middle of my game, but you know, I work as hard as I can, but I have got a core dedicated group of followers here that follow this YouTuber 
and it's just nice to know you're in my you're, you're in my corner and I can just keep doing what I do I don't have to worry about the ad rates from YouTube I don't have to worry about any any other income sources if I've got enough memberships I can just go on every day and just do my job and uh, try to uh, educate you on what's going on as best as I can again thank you all of you who are here this is great um, Dysor way to go buddy glad you're here and uh, please consider becoming a member of the channel that would be great uh, enjoy the extended chat uh, future members um, hey join the gang uh, join Bruce as my first sub ever after only 10 years massively consuming YouTube uh, there's value for everybody here uh, again if you, if you have a question about what we're doing here uh, let me know if there's anything you want me to cover I'll try to cover it for you whiteboard afternoon with Bruce Brest show in town thanks Robert for that um, and uh, I'm happy about that uh, uh, Uncle Bruce you're awesome thank you my friend uh, thank you, Nelson. Again, uh, you're the best, buddy. You're just this is always uh, always great. Smooth wake, smooth wake. Thanks, buddy. Uh, being a member and everything else. Thank you for sharing your knowledge, forming wrinkles by the day. Woof woof. Uh, thanks, Wally. Everybody here. Thank you, guys. Uh, we help each other as much as possible, and that's true. Members here do help members. Sometimes people have questions and they want to, they need an answer, and uh, members here help members with the answers as well, which is really cool. Uh, Cisco is out with their earnings apparently. Let me see if I can see uh, an aftermarket quote on Cisco. Fifty-three ninety-one down a dollar twenty-four. It was down eighty-six cents on the market as it was. So there you have it. Uh, there must be some, you know, maybe the numbers are good or not good enough for the market. I don't know. When is SoFi going to be back in the twenties? I hope real soon, <laughs> like real soon. Uh, it would make my day to have SoFi in the mid twenties to thirties. That's where I'd really like to see it here sooner rather than later. We'll see what happens. Oh, yeah, 25 cents every day plus Friday you get trivia. That's right. Every Friday night you get live trivia for free. Uh, that's thrown in. No extra charge. And, of course, you get updates uh, on, on uh, some of the stocks we're following from time to time. So there you go. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Uncle Bruce, I just bought two lessons, butterfly trading and aggressive strategies, writing call options, as much as I'm learning from this new format. Chris, way to go, buddy. Uh, enjoy those. Uh, I think you'll find them interesting. Each each lesson that I put up is usually an hour and 40 minutes to two hours long. There's a lot there. I use the whiteboard on several examples. We answer questions. Jen is the moderator. You get to hear Jen asking me questions that are coming from you guys. And uh, I say I, I try my best to make it as, as understandable as possible in plain English without too many fancy graphs and all kinds of other... Mm, deltas and graphs and Greek stuff and whatever. I just try to get down to the nuts and bolts of it. Are you making money or aren't you? Does this work or doesn't it? And uh, again, thank you all of you who are uh, picking up these lessons and watching them. It's great. Um, there you have it. Uh, in Germany, uh, Europe, uh, we, we need extra trivia. We need extra caffeine here because it's really late for us. I know. <laughs> 7 o'clock Eastern time on a Friday night uh, is kind of late in Deutschland. I do understand that. But it is Friday night, and so, uh, yeah, I hear you, man. It's okay. <laughs> uh, still really enjoyable. I can rem I recommend the trivia right on. Thank you, uh, Square, for that. Uh, we do have a good time on that. It it's just my I – un I unwind on Friday night with trivia. It's just so relaxing for me just to have the trivia show. Um, it's a lot of fun and a, a lot of uh, kibitzing. Um, I do the live show on this channel for sponsor members, for members. And I, I simulcast it with my other channel, Traveling with Bruce, with those members. So the two members are actually in one show at the same time, Friday nights at 7 o'clock. And uh, it's a pretty good time. So thank you all for, for that. All right. Um, what else is happening here? SoFi After Hours at 1423 up a penny. And uh, uh, the Dow closes down 1% as the Fed's minutes show support for tapering before year end. Maybe support, but not a vote and not a commitment, uh, just support. Uh, that's a whole lot different than a, a definite commitment that it's going to happen. But don't try don't try and tell normal people that. They, they freak out. Uh, NVIDIA is up a quarter on the aftermarket. It's now up 60 cents to 191. So it could be NVIDIA coming up with announcements, uh, earnings announcements that may, might be looking good too. One never knows. Um, so anyway, there you have it, guys. There's the uh, latest uh, from the uh, from the markets today. Um, never a dull moment in the big stock market world in which we live. All right. Uh, someday, Uncle Bruce will have a cruise ship show with Trivia Night. I agree. Grab a beer and shout answers into the chat. What could be better? 
Uh, how good is that? Uh, nothing wrong with that on a Friday night. Right on alert. You know it, my man. Gorgeous day here today. Beautiful sunny day. We've opened the windows to the house. Uh, we've opened the screen doors. We mm. have noises coming from the outside. Uh, gorgeous, sunny, clear skies. The smoke is gone. We had rain for a day and a half. Uh, we're hoping it'll last a while. We're not sure if more smoke will come in, but right now it is absolutely glorious here in Creston. And so we've opened up the house to allow fresh air in here because it, it is not smelling like smoke anymore which is kind of nice. Uh, anyway, there you go. Uh, Hood is falling fast. Uh, let's take a look at Robin Hood on the aftermarket. It is uh, 48.38 down $1.42 now on the Robin Hood. So there must be something going on there. Uh, let's see if we can get a quote up here. Uh, Hood, here we go. Uh, 48.01 down $1.71 on Robin Hood on volume of 381000 now in the aftermarket. Um, that's what we've got at the moment. Forty-eight oh two down a dollar seventy-eight on Robinhood. Okay, interesting stuff. Uh, GameStop aftermarket one fifty-seven oh six up a little bit. Not much going on there. Um, and uh, we closed at Matterport at fourteen oh nine. We're now fourteen twenty-nine on the aftermarket. We're actually up twenty cents, which is near the high of the day. Interesting there on Matterport. Um, anyway, there you have it. Uh, Robinhood forty-eight oh eight uh, down a buck seventy-two at the moment. Three hundred eighty-eight thousand shares traded. Um, waiting to see what kind of headlines might be breaking on on Robinhood. Um, not sure if we have any uh, if we have anything being uh, being released yet. Uh, and uh, let's see. Yeah, I'm still not seeing anything here. I'm looking at news announcements right now. Just pardon me. Well, I'm trying to find out if there's anything being said on Robinhood. If anyone sees anything, let me know. Um, and, and, you know, glad I held, like you said, bro, Uncle Bruce, it goes up by quarters, down by dimes. There you go. Uncle Bruce, you're wearing your platform shoes. You look taller. Uh, it's the camera angle. Uh, I can I can make the camera look much taller. I, I, you know, at four foot eight inches, I can make myself look like I'm seven feet tall. Uh, you guys have no idea. These stilts that I'm wearing, just like those titanium stilts that Lieutenant Dan wears in, in Forrest Gump. Just like that, uh, you, you never know. He built a stage. There, there's all other; those are other tricks. You know, I stand on, I stand on boxes. Uh, you never know what I'm up to. Uh, there's this deception everywhere uh, on camera. You know, like Hollywood tricks. You know, we we incorporate them all. What can I tell you? Uh, Forty-eight bucks on Robin Hood. Forty-seven eighty-five now on Robin Hood. Down a buck ninety-five or so uh, on the stock. Alrighty, there's there's where we're at right now. <laughs> Uh, thanks everybody for your uh, your continued support of this lonely YouTuber here in Creston, British Columbia, surrounded by packing boxes all over the place. Uh, we have listed our house and we're heading out. Uh, we'll be heading to Calgary uh, in the not too distant future, and then I'll be broadcasting from there. And then we'll be heading to the U.S. Uh, later in the fall, and I'll be broadcasting from there. And uh, who knows how close to where you guys are? I'm going to be hanging out with Jen. Should be a lot of fun. Have a great day. Thank you, John, so much. Uh, appreciate that. Um, uh, like Bruce would do, would be a hobbit from Lord of the Rings. Are you seriously? Uh, <laughs> I can't comment on that square. I can't say. Forty-seven eighty-six on Robinhood right now. Uh, down a dollar ninety-four. Uh, Four hundred twelve thousand traded. I'm really not sure if the earnings are out on Robinhood yet. This just could be pre uh, pre earnings jitters on the stock. I don't know. Do you have uh, any offers on your house? Uh, there was one that is reported, uh, reportedly being made on the house, uh, but uh, we're we're uh, we're waiting. Really, the first two weeks tell you everything. Um, we just we just noticing. I just noticed a um, a listing pop up on one of the websites. Uh, they haven't the, the the list. The house has not shown up everywhere on all these realty websites. They will over the next few days, and then we'll know we'll know what the uh, what the street thinks and what people think. But we're going to be out of here um, in not too not too long a time frame, and the house might actually sell after we move out because it'll be then empty and people can walk around without seeing boxes everywhere. Because right now it doesn't show very well. It's it's not showing well on the outside. It shows great, but on the inside it's cluttered with our crap, and we're going to uh, we're going to move uh, you know move out of here with with that crap sooner rather than later. 48.10 on Robinhood right now. Good luck with it. Thank you, Mirko. 10% uh, of us probably didn't hit the thumbs up. Uh, don't forget that thumbs up for Bruce. How many are we doing now? We've got uh, on the thumbs up button, 
260 thumbs ups right now, only 19 on the downside. Thank you, everybody, for these thumbs ups. I appreciate it very much. If you're able to uh, uh, spare a thumbs up, if you're able to find that button, hit that thing right now. There's three more, right, that just came in. We have 299 people here, 267 now on the thumbs up side. We'll probably hit 300 here in pretty short order if you guys can come through here. 272 now, 28 away from 300. Thank you guys so much for uh, for uh, hitting that. I uh, do appreciate it. Uh, thank you for, for uh, your support and your encouragement and kind words. It is much appreciated by Jennifer and myself. 275 now, 275 on the thumbs up meter, 25 away from 300. Thank you, everybody. Uh, can't complain at all. All, all right. Uh, uh, thank you, Splair. Um, and did you Matterport the house? No, not not with the boxes in here. <laughs> uh, yeah, not that with that. Um, you know, I'm watching one and a half speed. I love this. Uh, it, this is great. Um, we appreciate you. Thanks, man. Thanks, you guys. Um, are you going to have a border a yard sale? No, have no time. I have no time to do yard sales. No time and no energy. Uh, I, I can't imagine schlepping everything down to the driveway, trying to flog it, and then schlepping everything back in that I can't sell. I just can't. I can't do it. I need the five hours a day that I give you guys. I need that energy. I need the energy prior to each show to get ready for them. I need the time after the shows to recover. Uh, I have the other channel to deal with. I just have no. There's no way. Uh, I can't. I can't. Uh, can't do it. So, uh, no. This stuff is being, uh, uh, you know, donated. Uh, what we don't want is being given away. Uh, the dump will get whatever it gets, and uh, whatever's left over gets packed up, and we move it to Calgary. So, uh, yeah, that's what we're doing. Um, DQ, I think it helps. Once Uncle Bruce mentioned that we can rewatch all videos he made earlier, like I like again and again. This is the best thing about these classes uh, that I've done. You can watch the classes as many times as you want. Once you acquire one, you get to watch it again and again and again. If you lose the link to the class, just send me an email. Say, bros, uh, I need I need the link to the class number seven. I lost it. Um, I'll make sure you paid for it, and we'll send it to you. <laughs> Absolutely, and uh, you can rewatch uh, time and time again. Uh, thank you, everybody, for uh, for your support of this channel in every way you support it. It's uh, truly incredible. Uh, my relatives cannot believe it. They 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 cannot believe it that uh, that. Uh, that people I've never met um, uh, support the channel the way they do. They 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 can't believe it. they're going. Why? <laughs> I go because uh, because why? Because people like making money. Well, yeah, but you. <laughs> I'm going. Yeah, me. Uh, what can I say? Um, anyway, Bruce, stuff you don't want. Trivia night giveaways. There you go. Like equals thumbs ups. That's right. Thumbs ups, please. Hit the thumbs up button for us. We're now at 287 thumbs ups, 13 away from 300. Thank you all for getting us to 300. I say cheers to all of you around the world, wherever you're watching us from. We uh, we appreciate it. Hit that thumbs up button and get us over the, these nice round numbers. There we go. We love it. Thank you all for your help. I'm, as a matter of fact, in your honor, those of me who are giving me thumbs ups, I'm going to throw you some neat emojis right now. It's the least I can do is throw some neat emojis out there and say thank you all so much. Uh, that is what it's all about right there. Neat, neat, neat. Thank you, everybody, uh, for helping out in every way you do. <laughs> uh, yeah, relatives. play For the relatives, I'll play them some Yoko. That's right. When they... The next time I get together for a nice uh, nice Thanksgiving dinner, we'll throw the Yoko on nonstop for the whole show. That'll teach them. Ah, yes, yes. Yeah, there you go. You wouldn't give me a thumbs up, so how about this? Fourteen twenty nine and SoFi up seven cents. Go, SoFi, go. Please go higher. Um, we're down 15 cents on GameStop in the after hours right now. Robin Hood, 47.05, down 273 right now. Um, and... Uh, uh, we'll see how that kind of works out. 759,000 shares traded on Robinhood. They were at $50 and 5206 for the high of the day today, but uh, 4692 now in the aftermarket uh, under a bit of pressure here on 782,000 shares. There you go. Uh, the knees are coming. Here come the neat emojis. They're coming in like crazy. Thank you. Bruce, question is, do thumbs up matter more during the live stream or do the thumbs, thumbs up for folks watching replays help too? They both, they help in both cases. They really help in both cases because YouTube will recommend my channel 
um, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And uh, YouTube's analytics knows when you know when I'm live or not. And um, if you've given me a bunch of thumbs ups in the last several shows, and even after hours, uh, the analytics knows to promote the live show when he's on live or any video I do or any recap video I do. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so it, 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 every time you watch anything I do, if you're able to throw a thumbs up at it, live or rerun, it doesn't matter. It helps, it helps, it helps. I thank you guys uh, very much for that. Um, yeah, YouTube promotes um, uh, YouTubers that have a good engagement going with their viewers. It, they really promote those channels. So uh, that's, I appreciate it. 302, there it is, 302 thumbs up. So you guys are awesome, man. Thank you so much. Uh, appreciate that. Uh, that uh, that is great. I'm going to throw you some more neat emojis for that. Thank you guys for getting me over 300, just like that. Um, that is pretty cool stuff. Uh, <laughs> Uncle Bruce has to wear uh, Jen's special glasses when in front of the whiteboard. <laughs> Got it. Thumbs ups every time, anytime. Exactly. Thank you, thank you, and thank you all for for those. At uh, 46.86 down, 2.99 now on Robinhood. Um, uh, 890,000 shares. So, uh, you know, the Robin Hood's, the Robin Hood earnings couldn't have been that great, uh, if there were any, uh, or they were, you know, less than spectacular because the shares are not reacting all that well to this, uh, information here, from what I can tell you. Um, let me take a look here at, uh, at, uh, uh, Cisco. Let's see what we're doing on Cisco. They've come up with their numbers, I believe. Uh, CSCO, uh, Cisco Systems, closed at 55.15. On the market, they're at $55 now. They were in that 53.50 range for a little while, but now back to $55 a share. So it looks like, uh, looks like uh, Cisco is, uh, is coming out unscathed. Um, the company is only trading at 22 times earnings, so it's not like it's an overpriced, way out of the money stock. It's not. Uh, Cisco is a fair priced company. And then the other one was um, NVIDIA, wasn't it? We were watching for NVIDIA here. Uh, let's take a look at what NVIDIA has done uh, today in the aftermarket. It's 187.70, down 270. During the day, it was down uh, 418 to 190. Now 187.70, NVDA. Let's take a look. NVDA, NVIDIA. There we are. Um, aftermarket volume is 530. Thousand is now 188. Um, they did reach about 186 something for a little bit, but now 188. Uh, this is not a massive sell off. Down 240. This is not a problem. Uh, but let's keep in mind that going in to this earnings report, Nvidia was trading at 90 times earnings. Why? Because their earnings are exploding, absolutely exploding, and the stock is well ahead of its earnings. But its earnings are coming on gangbusters. And these guys are doing incredibly well um, uh, financially. Um, in 2017, the sales of NVIDIA were $6.9 billion. 2018, $9.7 billion. 2019, $11.7 2020, $10.9 And in 2021, $16.6 billion. So they've gone in five years uh, from $6.9 to $16.6 billion in sales. And this trend is still continuing on. So uh, the shares and the company will will you know keep on growing up. There is talk, um, just rumor, that eventually Nvidia will be in the Dow 30. That that is talk because their market capitalization is is growing out. Nvidia's market cap is 474 billion dollars. They are a major player and they are becoming even more profitable. Uh, now they're at 190 a share right now on Nvidia, so they are recovering very quickly. This uh, aftermarket loss it looks like they're wiping it out, so that's uh, that's a good sign. Uh, Robinhood now in the aftermarket is 46.16 down 364. Uh, this seems to be the low trade since the, uh, the since the uh, close 46.08 on 1.1 million volume now, so it's under a bit of pressure. Um, and uh, Cisco and Nvidia seem to be recovering from their from their days. Anyway, there you have it. There's the deal. Um, uh, one step at a time, and uh, one one uh, day at a time, and away we go. Okay. 
Uh, there he goes. Dear Uncle Bruce, uh, is there a, any safe strategy to play ATIP options? I'm holding 100 shares. Would like to scoop something since I'm down 60%. Um, you know, in theory, you can write a call option against your ATIP. I mean, in theory, it can be done. Um, the stock, of course, is um, is sitting now at um, uh, three three ninety nine a share. So, you know, you're not going to be able to write a uh, contract for a lot of premium, and it's certainly not going to bring back your sixty percent uh, scenario in in any one trade. Um, uh, you have to ask yourself. Uh, uh, do you want to offer your stock for sale by writing a covered call um, where the shares, if they, you know, in, in three, four days, they could easily go from four here, $3.99, $4, back to seven, eight bucks. That would probably put you into money already. Um, but if you write a call option against them, you might be taken out and you might lose money on the call. It's, it's, uh, it's rather difficult to, uh, to haul in a, a safe premium. Now, having said that, in theory you could look at writing a call way out there like you know way down the road um, if you were to write february calls um, the the most you can get for a ten dollar call is 20 cents for a, a february call not worth it a 750 will get you about 40 cents not worth it a five dollar call contract for february of next year will get you about 70 cents not worth it you're better off not doing anything with the options at all uh, just hold the shares, and if you can afford to buy more from time to time and scoop some cheap paper up, just do it that way. These never expire. They they won't have a seriously wide bid ask of $0.20 cents between buyer and seller. There's huge liquidity on the stock, and the primary shareholders of ATIP, a major pension, a major hedge fund, they are making moves right now with management changes. Uh, there's There will not be complacency here. There is turmoil happening the good kind of turmoil out in the executive suite to change things up and get this company rolling in the right direction i'm sure that in the last few weeks they have been hiring staff like crazy to fill up their their centers and they're building their cash numbers so that the next earnings report will be a surprise earnings report on the good side uh, i'm curious to see who they end up appointing as ceo that individual could be someone of a very high reputation and that could move the market a couple of bucks just the hiring of the right ceo so sit tight don't flinch wait it out we'll be fine um there you go am i happy it's here no i'm not uncle bruce since gamestop dropped today would it make sense to buy back tomorrow the september 10 200 cover calls and write 190s instead it depends on on how the shares um, uh, open up because it's possible that the shares in the first 15 20 minutes tomorrow might be in this 155 57 range uh, but they may in the pre-market already be moving into the 160 neighborhood then then there's nothing there's nothing you need to do on the other hand if we have a five or a six dollar drop in the first 15 20 30 minutes and we go down to the one 55 like 151 152 level then it might be a good idea to buy back the calls you wrote at a profit and then sit tight don't move let the shares uh, settle out see if they come back to this 157 level where they are now and maybe even higher on the day and then look at rewriting the 190s or um, um uh, i'm sorry rewriting the 200s excuse me rewriting them uh, if they go back up again um or or maybe 190s but right now i wouldn't uh, i wouldn't uh, shift at this moment give this stock a little more leeway to see how it starts the day all right cisco is whipsawing in the aftermarket uh uh that's true um let's see oh thanks uncle bruce hold it is uh let's go uh nvidia killed it in every category the company did incredibly well in every measure and uh the shares are uh, probably reacting pros very positively because of it nvidia right now i'm showing at uh, 189.78 only down 62 cents so it looks like the, the 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 upward movement of the stock long term is intact as they keep growing up i'm not surprised because uh, i had heard i had heard the whisper rumors that they were good that they were doing well all righty sec charges netflix engineers with a three million dollar insider trading ring interesting uh that should be interesting to see how that plays out 
Uh, let's see. Um, and uh, here we go. Many hospitals are sending patients to far off cities after running out of hospital beds, available beds. That's uh, the virus variant is real. Uh, don't let anyone fool you that it isn't unbelievable. Just unbelievable. Um, Robin Hood shares 4610 down 370 on 1.44 million shares traded today. So we have some uh, we have some uh, so, uh, some pressure there. Sales slightly above estimates on Cisco um, uh, uh, says uh, says uh, one of the headlines here. So the shares have uh, uh, the company's doing all right. Close to 5515 on the stock market on the market today in uh, on uh, on Nasdaq right now 5430 in the aftermarket down 85 cents. Um, they've been jumping between the 53 range and 55 range. Uh, but now only down 85 cents on 1.1 million. There's no concern on Cisco uh, about Cisco's future whatsoever. All right, cool. Thanks. You got it, Beach Boy. You got it, buddy. No problem. We'll uh, we'll keep an eye on this. Uh, the hood is no good, uh, says Mark Blue Sky. <laughs> uh, well, you know, it, it's, it, we're doing what we're doing. What can I tell you? Anyway, there you go, folks. I'm gonna pack it in. Uh, thank you for uh, being here today and hanging out with yours truly. Um, we're gonna be on the air again tomorrow morning at 8:30 Eastern time. Join us for another rip roaring adventure as we try to figure out what stocks are going up, what stocks are going down, and why they're going down. Uh, hopefully we have every one of our stocks going to the moon tomorrow, making us all very, very rich and wealthy. Um, except for those of you who've written contracts who will be able to buy them back first and then it goes up. <laughs> Thank you for hanging out with me again today. Thank you for all your support, uh, donations and, and becoming members and, and, and everything. You guys are so great. I appreciate it very much. Thank you for all these thumbs ups you've thrown our way. Uh, even this limited audience with only 246 people here, I have 319 thumbs ups. Ha, am I complaining? Nope, I'm not complaining. I thank you very much for this. And uh, have a great, uh, great night and a great evening. Stay healthy for me and join me again tomorrow. Let's make some more money. Uh, they see it all started on a Thursday. That's right. It all started on a Thursday. Uh, we'll catch you tomorrow. Same bat time, same bat channel. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow morning. Thank you, guys. Have a great evening. Appreciate it. Uh, take care. And... Uh, and let's have some. Uh, let's make some money tomorrow, and uh, enjoy a Thursday. Let's see what it can bring us. Okay. Thanks, guys. Uh, thank you, Sharon. Thank you for coming by to say hi. Thanks for the thumbs up. <laughs> hi and bye. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good night, everybody. You guys take care. We'll see you tomorrow. And uh, take care of yourselves. All right. Thanks, guys. Where's the dong guy? Where's that guy? See you later. <laughs>